yeah of course I, probably that's the only uh, hundred percent or one of the very few. you got my my point anyway let's see the civilizations mongols mayans and huns for both teams so expectedly no, no surprise yeah no surprise no surprise and you were spot on with this one Okie dokie. Now, let's go with the flanks and the pockets. In the left hand side we have rare name with Mongols versus Hyuna with Mayans. What do you think about this one? And in the I... right hand side, yeah, Mayans versus... Versus... Hans. Versus... Hans. Yeah, I think in a Mongol versus Mayan 1v1 it depends very much on if the Mongol can beat the man before it comes down to archer warfare. Okay. Because in an archer fight, uh, man's have a clear edge. Like True. A clear big edge. Cheaper archers. So, yeah. On the other hand, um, if the Mongol is not able to do that, the man gets the edge. But, you know, we have seen insane 9 minute 20 second castle ages by Mongols. So True. True. That is more than possible that even before there's an archer range up, there's like three four scouts on you and you just lose a lot of villagers check out rare name though will he lame a boar he already has the scout and he's he could spot one of the two enemy boars but i think this is not part of his plan man he's just flaring the enemy base the enemy town center right but not that going for the laming well as mongol that could have helped him big time what do you think man why not go I for the laming? I think the boar would be very difficult to lame because you would have to take that boar through the enemy wood. No, and out he could go. So. He could go to the right hand side, for example, right uh, towards the the center, the middle of the map, and get that boar, man. Nobody it's said that. It's possible he could be yeah. just going around and scouting that place, depending. Like it depends on the route because he doesn't have that place scouted, so he probably won't lame it until he knows that there's a clear route. Uh, once he has that place scouted and he knows that he can take it, he might just go ahead and take it. It's possible. It's more than possible. Let's see. Let's see. He's coming back with the scout, but now nah, only to to scout even more. Why not taking the boar, man? One more time. As a Mongol, this can be a pretty important boost with the food. Katsuni, we must understand that this is a game between Hong Kong A and UKC. They probably have like five, six hundred ping in there, which makes laming a bit difficult. In the game, yeah, it's so. it's also a point. But by the looks how the game is running, I don't think it's a very high ping, man. Usually when, you know, there is a lag or high pings between the players, we can also see in the game how it runs. It's not the case here, man. True, it looks just just looks just fine, agree. Yeah, yeah, it's anyway, I think smooth. he just yeah, yeah. I think he's giving priority to information over stealing a boar right now because Might it, be. Yeah, might it, be. It, it, it would depend. I mean just look at him. He's off to get those deer and uh he's almost up. Like he he could go up any moment right now. He is one already. I mean he's researching loom and uh, after loom finished he will go up. But now uh, is it uh, well of course Deer are deer, but he prefers to build probably a second mill to take those deer instead of using the scout to lure like two, three, maybe even all of them. <clears throat> How good that is! Well, um, it would highly depend on how far the deer are, though I personally prefer just. Uh, not building a mill and just luring them in but yep. again uh, we can see that rare name prioritizes information over everything else so that's why he's going for the mill because um, that would mean he would need to bring a scout back and push the players in instead I mean not uh, building that mill saves your scout the time you have to like go out and find the enemy players understand where they are no no I, I know what you mean and and also in you know, I mean uh, in the early or, or let's say mid dark in, in in early feudal age it's fine to have the villagers taking those deer i mean how much army the enemy can do and how fast he it, is not the strongest one so not high risk of losing them but check out oh check out his scout God. taking down Ooh, one purple yeah. villager purple does not have loom so this is really bad 
and still no loom for him man he's taking the risk ay 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 he's taking the risk He's trying to lure that villager to go and have the hill advantage. Yeah, if he can get the hill advantage, that will be bad. Uh, okay, now he, he he just that is just extremely dangerous. You, no matter what happens, I believe you should have loom by the time you go to build walls. True. Anyway, he was able to to kill a villager, which is pretty pretty good. And, and is there a the... drush? No drush, right? Yeah, no rush here, at least so far. Um, on the other hand, two of Hong Kong's players are in feudal age, and this this is gonna do a lot, do a lot of damage. Like, but why Rare Name decided to create militias with his uh, faster feudal age instead of building the stable and going scouts? I mean, isn't that a I, bit weird? I guess he's going for men at arms. I mean. Doesn't make sense to me though. Why would you uh, build three militia? That's why he doesn't I said. even have gold for men at arms right now. So he might have it soon. So men at arms uh, actually do a lot of damage if you can access the enemy. But uh, I don't agree entirely. Uh, he knows that he's facing a man, like you said, and how far behind, you know, uh, he can be on the way to feudal age. And once the mayans are also building their archery ranges, even even for one. And with cheaper archers, can create three, four, five yeah. archers that can mm. counter even the men at arms. I don't know. I mean, let's see how it goes. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's a bit think, weird choice. Yeah, now I think I know why he made that choice. Because look, he's sending four villagers I see. forward. I see, I see. So, um, now when you forward, men at arms are a very powerful unit because, um, they're very cute, very quick in the early feudal age at clearing places out. And remember, it's going to take um, the Mayan player a bit of time to have like three, four archers. And until you have at least three archers, you cannot deal with three men at arms. So it, it, like now look, he's complete. He's being taken off wood. He does not have a second wood anywhere. And no, I know, I know what you mean. Wood, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like. It was a good choice because at this moment in time, that tower is going to deny him the only good wood he has. And that is not... that does not do a lot of damage. Oh man, and check out the lumber camp now placed by Hyuna. Not a very good one if you're asking me. Ooh, God. I mean, more importantly because uh, Rayon name ha is on stone and... Um, Really, can just put one tower there and deny that entire wood and the gold. But like even more, just on the other yeah. side of the palisade wall. Yeah, yeah. Even more now, we have a, a red player, the Hans, right? The the pocket on the way to Castle Age, man. A, a pretty fast Castle Age, faster than Purple. Now let's see if uh, no targets, man. I don't see any. Like any build on stone. <laughs> Come <laughs> on, at least take the challenge. <laughs> Tarkins, 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 like you said. And now a second archery range for Teal player. Wow, he wanted to find probably another good placement for a second lumber camp, but he decided to return with a lot of villagers and now trying to build a defensive tower. Ay, 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 tough situation, man. For tower Teal player. is going to be able to deny at least give him protected wood for the time being like that that's all that tower is going to serve for now but at least it gives him some scope to fight back that's the thing like yep oh and, uh, look at that and the tower the other tower is getting denied like. yeah that that's a that that's actually a good <laughs> okay uh -huh. that is a that is a unique way to deal with the situation, but it worked. Well, once he has those torchy ranges and can pump a, a few archers, should be okay. One forward, on the other side, down. Yellow, yeah, on the other side, I see it. Yellow now has knights on him, and oh god. Yeah, but purple is also in in castle age, and oh, but he's, he's sending, sending knights yeah, to yeah, yeah. deal with that push first. I mean. I see it. It's not gonna work because the tower is palisaded out, which means you cannot break that anytime soon. On the other hand, um, 
the other side actually needs his help more because those knights can just take somebody out of the game so quickly. Most people uh, consider why to build, like why people go for the archers, no matter what civ they are. It's usually because in in the early castle when knights come to you, skirmishers serve nothing. Like, wow! Check out poor yellow man. Yeah. He, he was trying to palisade wall, but didn't work out, and now he's on the run with all the lumberjacks. And only one gold miner safe. The other one is outside the palisade wall. Yeah. Now the archers for green player can still go through, I think, right? Yeah, the archers can easily deny that um, barrack he was trying to put up. I. Why a second barrack for yellow player? With hands. yeah, this just this just looks a bit ugly in my opinion. This it, it looks like a takeout. Uh, I, I believe that uh, purple player should have gone on the other side to help. He has enough knights right now to stop the push for the moment, but it's not going to help over time. I mean, uh, eventually these guys will have to come up with a better way to deal with the situation. Yeah. I just don't think they have options right now. I mean, there are four knights, and if those knights move into that other wood from yellow, that's going to be it for him. Much. Well, it seems that purple, instead of sending his knights over to yellow's base to help him, he's going for some raiding. His knights heading over to green's base, which is on the way to castle age. Purple with the bloodlines upgrade on the way. But, oh, yeah, I think he decided uh, in the end to send the knights to help yellow, actually, like mid midway. Yeah, at this point, those knights are not going to do much because of the amount of uh, archers that archers, have been stopped yeah. up. Those knights are pretty much going to just hit something and die. It's it's not lo it's not looking good for UKC. Uh, I don't know what they can do actually at this point. Um, the Mongol player in pocket, he is still on one TC, pumping two stables wow, worth wow, of knights. Wow, wow. Check out yellow again. Now he has one more time archers. Yeah. Make him yes. on the run, poor guy. And on top of that, all three players from Hong Kong will be in Castle Age, man. Both green and blue on the way to Castle Age. And all of them will be there. While only uh, the purple player in the UK in yes. Castle Age. So what he can do then? What's the plan? I think the plan is try to win somehow. <laughs> I feel like I feel like they should have gone for the double sling. <laughs> I still think so. <laughs> All right. And back home, a rare name with defensive towers to the main gold, to the stone. I mean, just those couple of archers incoming from Till. Yeah, maybe he will. Yeah, he will make some villages run, but not the big, big damage. While on the right hand side, oh, check out purple though, clearing the army, the forward army. Good job, man. His knights with bloodlines and plus one armor. Yeah, clearing most of... No, yeah. actually he will take down all the army. Good job. Yeah, red moved out of the area. And if, if you don't have knights backing you up, archers don't work. They don't do anything against... Um, well, they do, but not that much. Knights. Yeah, Not yeah. enough, at least. Yeah, not mean, enough. Plus True. one knights take only two damage. You need 60 shots to take out one knight. So... <laughs> Okay. It's not gonna work so well. On the other hand, crossbows are a different story. A bunch of crossbows can stop a bunch of knights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. This, agree. Is, this is going to depend a lot. Yeah. Uh, look, look, pay attention. Oh god, no. He's not looking. He's definitely not looking. Oh man, come on. If, if only Teal was moving just a bit forward, he could see the, the town center. From rare name, come on, dude. Botkin arrow for rare name, while red player researching bloodlines. Will barrow for teal player. And purple. going up for rare name. Uh, yeah, he's booming up. All right. Let's put chat off. Go here in the chat. Uh, we have red with wall wall. Well, it's, it's not a complete wall. 
to the right hand side of the map now he is building more palisade walls but uh, to the left hand side he needs a little bit uh, a little bit more anyway he sits with three town centers and quite a lot of farms Stone, uh, enough villages on gold as well so yeah he yep. can start pumping two maybe even three stables worth no. of fully upgraded knights very yep. soon and that's gonna do a lot of damage So uh, let's see. Purple is waiting. I do not like Idle Army. Whenever I see Idle Army, my brain goes, why are you waiting? Just well, he's just bringing a few more, a few more units. I think he wants to gather all his army, or maybe he was waiting also for Teal player to come along with these few archers. Maybe he's afraid that uh, the enemy has some pikes or, uh, you know, spear spikes. Possibly. Um, it was the... And you see, now they are going along. The camels, the knights. Kill yeah. the vil, man. Kill the vil. Kill the vil. Kill it. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Can, can purple, you know, the only pair in Castle Age do something more? Oh, a lot of crossbows are going to enter yellow space right now. But like you said, man, crossbows are a different story. But back yeah, home, do. but back home, uh, check out Green. He doesn't yeah. have enough crossbows Ooh, to stop God. those knights, man. Those wills are dead. Oh, focus on the wills. Don't chase the crossbows. True. He should take on the villagers. I totally agree. I mean, he was oh, able to God. kill two, three wills, but then going for the enemy crossbows. What? But like this, he, he he forced the green player to come with uh, with his forward army back home. Yeah, now red is coming in with knights there. This is gonna be a interesting fight. Yeah. Um. Ooh, he's not paying attention. So the big fight now it's uh, it's here on the right hand side. Yeah, you have to look. Like uh, he lost like one, two, three, four knights there when he was not looking and. That does a lot of damage. And now monks are coming in. This is not going to go well. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting a few knights uh, converted. Anyway, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, red player with a pretty good booming here, man. The Huns, like I said earlier, he's with three town centers, a lot of farms, enough villagers on gold. No, even a fourth town center to the extra gold on the left hand side and the only player with more than a hundred population yeah seems to be yeah. super strong man yeah he's going to he has one two three four stables right now pumping knights that's a lot of knights yeah a lot well look at the army army wise 28 military for red player 31 for green by the way while now purple uh, dropped a little bit he had more but now 22 8 for teal and 19 for yellow player anyway uh, we have castle now well, i mean castle age for teal good job and yellow yellow and teal have both reached castle age nice a uh, hundred wills for the hun pocket against the 57 wills for the mongol pocket so uh, not looking very good right now Yeah, the mini boom that uh, the hunter was able to do has given him a very, very powerful economy. And uh, I think if they group their crossbows with the knights, that's going to take somebody uh, yeah, out. That, that, that could t just take somebody out of the game. Anyway, Ooh, I but like... nice raid. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like their... the aggressive play from Purple, man. He's keep going with, with his knights to pretty much everywhere forcing red player at least with some army to keep chasing him i like the aggressive play from the purple like i said Good it's job, the man. best chance you normally have at getting back into a game is you keep attacking the other person and you keep their attention off you yep now uh crossbows moving from yellow to green's base green's crossbows are about to hit yellow's base <laughs> yeah That's it's gonna good. be a crossbow interchange but, Let's see if anybody built any mangonels yet. But um, we have no, no mangonels yet. We have now red player on the way to imp man. On the way to imperial age 136 population. 
25 mm. military units. Ay, ay, ay. A small group of knights from Red Player just entered yeah. Purple's base. There are not oh, too many. He... Let's see how fast Purple reacts to this small raiding. Yeah, he 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 saw it quick enough. Yeah, least. yeah, yeah. He's not gonna lose much. That was that was okay. That was okay, man. And he's bringing camels out, so he should be able to hold that. Yeah, well, like I said, not not a, a large number there of of knights, just a few. At least for now. But now uh, Red has the information. He's not fully fully walled. Three town centers yeah, for the Mongol player. Red, Red can react to this right now because he's still pumping a lot of knights. And like he has a ginormous economy. 117 villagers. That's more than enough. Yep. I totally agree. Anyway, uh, yellow player able to kill a few villagers, a few gold miners from green player. Come on, Red. Go, Tarkins. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have even a castle? I don't see. He has enough stone for a castle, but no, he doesn't have a castle yet. Yep. And now green player on the way to Imperial Age, while red player will be there in like three five seconds and like you said man he has a lot a lot of knights those will be cavaliers with uh, plus four armor upgrade pretty damn strong indeed cavalier with plate uh, armor plate barding armor while purple only now researching the plus one attacking upgrade and sending back all his uh, units to deal with only three four manga dies. you for real man why? Yeah, you do not do that. Yeah, I mean, just send a, a few of them. And in the end, you see, he didn't need to come back with all his army. And, and now he will send uh, those knights again forward. Losing, losing time here. I, I'm not saying that that's why they are losing the game or whatever but you don't do that like you said you don't do that man you hey, don't run with the all the army news, from one side to name, another one yeah in the good news rare name is doing a castle age mango die rush he is not on his way to imperial yet now he will be but he does have a whole bunch of mango die and castle age yes he does and check uh, out red those player. crossbows are not gonna have a good time <laughs> no Red player with the Paladin upgrade on the way. And yeah. you're right, rare name just clicked uh, to go up to Imperial Age. So all players now again from Hong Kong will be in Imperial Age while from the other team oh, not one look player at the big clicked up fight GG, in man. Between, no, in the, GG. between the knights and the yeah, that's a GG. That's and the cavaliers. GG. Yeah, once once he saw those cavaliers it basically destroying his army in the middle, purple was the first one. To say GG, it was, it was GG. Well, what do you think was, if it was, uh, the mistake or mistakes from the UK team? I really don't think there was much of a mistake. True. It was more of a different level of play from the Hong Kong team. It, it felt like, uh, it just felt like two different ELOs playing against each other. Just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I understand what the UK team is feeling because I am in these games very often where I'm against like an 1800 player and I was 1400 <laughs> player and yeah, it, it's yeah, just, yeah. it just doesn't go well. So uh, it, it's just two different levels. It, it, anyway, um, uh, if you want to note some mistakes there, I, I would say that uh, yellow player needed to do faster walls when he was trying to wall off the enemy. Like he had the option to just go bam bam one wall after the other you know how villagers pull walk po pull walls out of their pocket out of nowhere yeah and uh just protect himself for the moment but instead he decided to complete one wall at a time um doing the loom in the dark age from uh the mongol pocket very important something he missed out on so yeah it was it, it was a few mistakes here and there but I still believe it was, uh, it, it's just two different levels of players. And Zero Empires is the host. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How awesome. Just I, when, ju I just can't do that. Just when Rare Name was, was asking for their home map. But I see uh, them players going out. 
Yeah, they seem to be switching players. Switching, yeah, out. switching some yeah. players. So let's let's see what will be the home map for UKC. Islands? 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 Is he asking or saying? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm also asking, like, islands? Really? Yeah, yeah like, seriously, do they really want to take a Hong Kong A on an island? Oh, no, on island, exactly. I am not sure how good an idea that is. Obviously, I mean, we will find out again. If Islands, man, unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. Maybe they have something uh, Yeah, they probably prepared. have some strategy planned yeah, out. Yeah, that yeah. could be the case. Two versus three. <laughs> so they're waiting for another player. Uh, come on, Zach, give host to one of the other players. By the way, r rare name just left or specked himself. No, he's he spec himself. It seems that he uh, he's not playing in this game. Ah oh, well, happens happens. Yep. So they're playing islands and. Uh... They want a 3v3 or 4v4, I'm confused, like... Yeah, yeah the presence of the theory. other language is a bit confusing to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were just asking, but it's going to be a 3v3. We are a small team, no problem, man. It, and it's in the settings. I mean, if one team wants, uh, wants to play a 3v3, the other team cannot force them to play 4v4. So it's going to be a 3v3. Challenge to the players, turtle ship rush. Oh my god, Ashby <laughs> with his <laughs> challenges. Good job, man. <laughs> someday one player is going to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that someday uh, someone will, man. <laughs> okay. And I shall keep trying until that happens. <laughs> let, let, let's just see. Like, <laughs> oh wait, please hide sieves. <laughs> Actually, so they, got, they they might actually have a strategy if they want to hide sieves. I mean, but actually, the first game should have played the same with hidden civilizations. Now I'm that not, was, I yeah, don't know, no, man. There's, there should be hidden civilizations. I agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't paying attention to see if that there was that option, you know, ticked in. But uh, it, by the looks, it wasn't. Now I don't know how important uh, that is or. But they didn't play with hidden sieves, which they should. Moment, by the way. No problem. Take, Take your time. So, come on. Uh, will uh, Zero give host to somebody else or they have to move to another room? Don't ask them, man. I mean, you guys... This is your home map, so you choose whichever map uh, you're actually confident. <clears throat> okay, now they now they can play. Three versus three. So for Hong Kong team now, Water HK, Ray CCCC, uh, Moyat. While for the UK, the same players, Hyuna, Ju Mad Bro. And Laurel. Map version 3. Okay. So they have to go with a specific one. Yeah, a, uh, SY, Nations Cup maps. They have to be there. All right. Still waiting. Is Mongo with us, by the way, here anymore? Oh, no. Okay, so by the looks, he is uh, streaming in his channel. So, white uh, risk or white the, what's the risk? You have your wish fulfilled, man.
I like how Juice, what you just said. <laughs> You'll still find a way to wall. <laughs> <laughs> might be, might be. You can never know. Yeah, you might just connect all the forests on the edge of your wall. <laughs> it's doable, man. I mean, of course, you, you cannot wall. By the way, uh, will somebody ever release a patch where you can wall on water? Build walls on water? Yeah, let's hope that never happens. <laughs> this, is, this is hope against hope that never happens. Otherwise, <laughs> China will never lose another tournament. Just never. You think if so? If they can even wall a water map, it's over. <laughs> this, okay. this is it. <laughs> I was joking. Of course, we don't want to see <laughs> that, man. Never, ever. But yeah, but like you said, uh, they can wall. In their islands, they can wall. On the shoreline. I haven't ever seen it happen, but it, it would be an unorthodox strategy. <laughs> it's doable, but what's what's the reason? You know, it's it's rare that we can see one players going for a fast transport. It can happen, obviously, but usually they are going uh, to fight for the water control. And if you lose time to build those walls, man, that's not good. Nevertheless, they started, so game number two, anytime soon, people. Islands is going to be Islands is the home map for UKC. Like in the first game when I asked, what do you think the civilizations will be, Mr. Ashby? Vikings, Huns and Japanese. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to take a moment. Um, no problem. I think um, on the water map, I would say Huns, Vikings, Japanese. So why why, why then did, did you challenge them to go for turtles, man? <laughs> why? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, I I would really hope against hope that somebody picks Koreans and there's a turtle ship rush. That would be one of the most <laughs> interesting things that can happen on this map. Uh, I personally do not like islands as a map. It's a very personal thing, but uh, I find it, uh, it it just so, so, so intensive that my brain cannot handle the pressure of microing alias. So I just dislike the map. Have Seriously? On. Yeah, I just cannot deal with the idea of microing those giant ships. I, 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 I enjoy it too. Really, I, I like to play water maps, man. And also watch water maps. But yeah, it's like you said, a matter of, uh, of taste. You don't like it. That's it. Yep. Yeah, then again, I'm a man who plays Black Forest, Arena, and Regicide Fortress. So I like big walls. <laughs> <laughs> right. But those tur tur turtle ship, I think they are so so expensive, if I'm not mistaken. So even if uh, one player goes with, with Koreans, you know, how, yeah, how I mean, high the chances lose, to see those turtle ship? You lose the entire ship, map, then you just sneak a build somewhere, build three, like boom to Imperial Age, build four docks, and just mass a bunch of turtle ships, and then you die. Then you die peacefully. That <laughs> you, you you did that, right? <laughs> but at least you built turtle ships. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> turtle ships. Uh, an, uh, uh, another question. In water maps, we see most of the times Vikings. Why not those uh, long boats or how they're called? Yeah, they die to galleys. Uh, they die to war galleys, and they don't do enough damage. So they, they, so they are weaker uh, than than the galley, so that's the, yeah, they, the reason. They are not as strong as in yeah, yeah, yeah. like in a water map. Like theoretically speaking, a bunch of fire ships should be able to beat a bunch of galleys, but they don't. So like, longboats yeah. are like super duper fire ships, but they still do the same thing. They toss a bunch of arrows at close range, and the galleons just overall do way more damage. Okay, so that's I got just, it. Yeah, because uh, you know. On the stats seems like a good uh, good unit, but not that great, you know, in, in practice by the looks. Yeah, it's like they're like the chicken ooze of the water, but galleons are <laughs> the like the paladins of, of the, the water. water so. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Yeah. So let's see the civilizations and where you spot on. Yeah, Vikings, Japanese. Ooh, but in one team we have Mongols. What? For yeah, for UK Mongols while Huns for the for the Hong Kong. Mm. This is this is not a CSA game. Otherwise, I would be like, okay, this is going to be an instant nine minute fifteen second feudal age, and somebody's <laughs> gonna land me. So, if, if this was a game with CSA, that would happen. But in this game, I highly doubt that's gonna be the case. I, I think they just want to get to uh, feudal age really quickly and take over the water before the other team can. But as we know, a Vik he's against a Viking. I highly doubt true, that is possible. True. I highly doubt it. Like. So UK has the Viking player as the pocket, right? While for the Hong Kong is the Japanese player. Well, usually I you, want, like... you want to have the Japanese as a flank, right? Yeah. With, with those no, fishing no. ships like mini tanks, double the hit points. Yeah, it's undeniable. You want them. Personally, yeah. personally, I like a Viking flank more than a Japanese flank because Vikings are better off winning the water early. True. Also true, and yes. You, you, once you win the water in Feudal Age, there's very little chance to get back into it. So, suppose you, you have like a Japanese Viking against each other and on one side you have a Viking flank, the other side you have a Japanese flank. The the hit points of the fishing ships will not even matter at that point anymore. They're just going to die against the superior early game of... Yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, definitely. But on the other... On another note, right? If if the Viking pocket can go for, let's say, a uh, fast enough Castle Age or even Imperial Age, then they, they might be pretty unstoppable. Yeah, agreed. It depends on how the game flows. True, I mean, true. If, if you can if you can turn it into a two versus one, then there isn't much of a possibility there anymore. Another question, though, why uh, in this type of maps in in islands specifically, uh, no player goes for uh, boar lamings, man? Why? Yeah, I mean, um, do, can you put a boar on the transport ship? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I, I have not tried that. Yeah, I was just. <laughs> if you joking. can, then it could be theoretically <laughs> possible. I... <laughs> it was just a, a dumb question. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. The early game at Island is usually not a lot. There's not a lot to say about it. <laughs> See, like... Now going on a on a more serious note, uh, what do you think it will be more important? of a fight uh, in the top uh, in the top uh, map right with viking versus uh, uh, yellow player mongol or in the south where we have uh, the japanese versus the huns what do you think i think the top fight will be more important the because it's going to yeah. define the game more i mean a mongol viking matchup is a much more tilty matchup it's like you, somebody's going to win that very early on the other hand uh, uh, Japanese Hun matchup is it's gonna be equal it's gonna be similar and um, it's just that whenever you have a Viking that is the player you want to play around in a game yeah yeah and, yeah uh, so you want your Viking to be winning their match matchup wherever it is and the Vikings plays usually what is the most important thing in any water map whatsoever if, if it's gonna be a water fight your Viking needs to get ahead yep okay Let's see, uh, let's see if th is that the case, but look at the crazy deer, man. The crazy Bambi. Keep running around Blue's town center like... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Told you yesterday, man. Some yep. deers are just crazy. <laughs> yep, they do. They are, I mean. So let's see. Um, What's the plan here for the Mongol? Oh my god, yeah. he is not on water. Which one? The Mongol player. For the, um... So that's why I said maybe we will see a fast, you know, feudal age with transport and focusing, you know, with with going, like I said, tr uh, transport and uh, on land. And yeah, man, look at this, the Mongol player already on He's the up. way to feudal age, man. He's up, indeed. He's gonna be there around nine minutes forty-five seconds or so. Nine thirty-seven. Yeah, nine thirty-seven. Yeah, so. That's going to be a very, very early feudal age. Let's see if the uh, Viking player is up or not, on the other hand. You don't have the the spec uh, 
the spectator dashboard enabled? Unfortunately, not yet. Whoa, but make it then because this new version has, you know, some things improved. They automatically display the fishing ships whenever, you know, somebody is creating fishing ships. If there are no fishing ships, then, then that table is not present in the main one. So it's like something like automatically, the same with, with the trade cards. I'll need to upgrade that. Then as and as uh, also, uh, you know, the upping time, it displays the starting and when they will be in Castle Age. So that's why I knew that in 937, uh, Yellow Player will hit Feudal Age. It's a very Let's good see one. where Blue puts his dogs, because that's going to be a very important thing. Well, Blue has already a dock uh, yeah, in, no, in I between mean... him and Blue Player, but... Uh, oh, 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 Is he going to transport? Because I see now a uh, Yellow Player now he's building putting, a second uh... dock. Yeah, I would have liked to, to see him transport because of how quickly he got up. Because, I mean, think about it. If you're a Mongol player and you can take the Viking player out of the game, you basically make your Viking player much, much stronger at that point. And I would have loved to, true, to see true. him just transport and turn this game into a land map for him and the Viking. And on a land map, a Mongol has a much, much better chance of winning. Like a far, far better chance. But I mean, what's, what's the point with the faster feudal age uh, and... Uh, not not fish booming man he he's the only player zero fishing ships why yeah, uh, no i can't make any sense out of that like okay i i actually legitimately cannot make any sense out of that uh, Be, because, because no, right no, now he, yeah yes yeah, seriously I, 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 I also thought w when i didn't see him going for dock like you also spotted right and a, a faster fuel age I was a hundred percent is going to be a fast transport. You know, he's going to build uh, the, the, the barrack home and then with two, three villagers and, and, and the scout, whatever he will build archie ranges on, uh, you know, blues side of the, the yeah, map. That, that is actually one of the most effective ways to take a Viking out of the game. You yes. Just force them to not play a water map. But yeah, you're going fast feudal age and then decided to go galleys. But how well this can work against a Viking or not? And you don't have fish boom. Zero. It doesn't, like, doesn't make too much sense to me. It just doesn't make sense to me. I yeah, agree with that one. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm trying to understand the thought process behind it. I can't understand it. And uh, look, at, look at that. Um, the galley fight there and the villager is just repairing that one galley. But you know what's interesting, more or less? Ah, well... Uh, Blue player was on the run with his fishing ships. I was about to say he doesn't also have any fishing ship, but he does have four. Okay, he was yeah. just on the run. He was just moving it yeah. out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right now, this is not looking good for yellow player because he has the same number of galleys and he's going to get outnumbered because it's three dogs versus two right now. Yeah. He is putting a third dog, but this is a Mongol versus Viking on water. My my point, my point, and that's why I was hugely surprised to see him not going transport, and, and again not he's fish popped. boom, man. Yeah, he's wow. popped, man. He's popped. Ooh, God. And check out in return now also red player on the way to Castle Age. How close or or how far away is uh, the pocket from the UK team? Laurel. I mean, he's going to eh, not too too far away. Actually, he's not too too far away. He's the Viking. He's still gonna need a moment, at least, at least another villager, maybe two, before he can go up. I mean, when you're in the pocket, you want to have a lot of fishing boats. Like, look at the sheer number of fish that Red has. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know. It is displayed as 16 fishing ships, man. 16, while uh, a green player only four. So four times more the fishing ships for red player. That's that's huge difference, not big, huge difference. Yeah, and remember, fish are a very fast gathered resource. I mean, it's, it's yeah, really, yeah, yeah. really quickly gathered. You you do not want to deal with that as a player. You you want to have take advantage of being a pocket at that point. 
On the bottom side, as expected, the Han and the Japanese matchup is not going anywhere yet. It's still very equal. Yeah, it's pretty even. You're right. Though green player does have a few galleys. Why? Curiosity. Anyway, um, he's going for a three galley feudal galley rush. Is he up yet? Yeah, he's now... The teal player is up. Why? Even faster than the viking. <laughs> yeah, the viking is still not up yet. Now he's gonna go up, I think. But double on purple, man. Oh green my god, he did double. not have buildings. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't have the buildings. Good job, man. While red player already with the war galley and botkin arrow upgrade on the way. Purple researching wheelbarrow. Right, so this we have is... red. Yeah, go ahead. This is not gonna look good right now because uh, red player is gonna be able to mass a whole bunch of war galleys and he's gonna be able to push really quickly. I do have my doubts about his choice to stay on three um, docks. He should be able to afford a fourth. Because of the amount of food influx he has, he will not need food villagers anytime soon. On the other hand, uh, the other pocket has also built a lot of galleys and he's up and he's getting a bunch of, a uh, whole bunch of four docks worth of uh, galleys pumped. So it's gonna be tilty, it's gonna be tilty. And look at yellow. Yellow is taking out uh, blue's docks. I was about to ask, where is blue man with his army? I mean, I was trying to to see, you know, some raidings, but it didn't happen. What is he? He playing? went to he went to attack green, and he took out green from the fish at least. But um, that's not going to help anymore because at this point, green can just start pumping orgelly soon and. Yellow has a massive army. It's massive. Yeah, I mean, slowly, slowly he was able to, to gather 21 uh, galleys. Actually, the most, the most number. Yeah. The second one is blue player with 20 military. Now 23 for yellow, 16 for green, 7 for teal. And the blue right now is going up to Castle Age. I think this is a good time for Yellow to take this fight because even if you lose a lot of will, a lot of units, you'd rather like go equal against him than um, deal with it later on when they are made into war galleys because he's not up yet. So I would like to see him take this fight. That that would have been a good fight to take right now. Yes, indeed. But he's just not uh, not sure if to take the fight or not. He's trying to micro, you know, hit and run, hit and run, but doesn't take the fight. And yeah, yeah because anytime soon he he will see the castle age for for blue player. Yeah, go ahead, man. Right now he's at twenty seven food, which is not good. Like deciding to go up really quickly to feudal age and not having any fishing ships and. So many idle wheels wow. everywhere. He's just, his eco is not looking good. He has very little supply of food right now. So I feel if you're going to go up quickly on Mongol, you should land. Otherwise, the idea of just going for a full-time fight is a better one. He still has a moment before Blue does go up, so he can now box him in and just take the fight. That was one good idea right now. Uh, while in the middle of the map, look, there's a humongous fight between red and uh... and two and two other players. Well, purple is trying to help a little bit, but uh, I think they should wait for purple to also hit castle age. Anyway, and finally, yellow decided uh, to take the fight. He was able to what? What? Okay. Why? My next question, why? I mean, they so... What? Why? Do you see some landing or what? I don't understand it. I that mean, doesn't it, make sense to me. I mean, yeah, is it the it, fact it, that blue reached castle age? But in the middle, in the middle, where they had that big fight, both players, both UK players, they they are in Castle Age. Purple was on the way to Castle Age, while on the other side, I agree, uh, blue hit Castle Age faster than yellow. Uh, like you said, probably yellow looking at his own resources, 
he said uh, there is no chance or very low chances that we can win this and considering blue player was the viking and uh, all of them basically uh, in castle age then they will be outplayed yeah. i don't know i guess that that's the thought process they gave into it i i I would have liked to see Yellow take the fight while he had the advantage there because yeah. there was a point where he had more galleys there. But he, he was just waiting too long. And on the other hand, um, the I would still... like That was not a situation where you give up because uh, Red Player was not in a position to actually take the fight yet. He was still starting to pump from five docks. On the other hand, Green had built up a good position for himself. Yeah. I would have liked to see them keep trying. I don't know, that just looked sad because they actually seem to have a legitimate game there. Dude, 20 oh, well. something minutes. See, even. It's not a 4v4, but 3v3 and 20 something minutes when, like you said, they could, they, they could play a little bit more. Yeah. On that flank. In the north with Viking in Castle Age versus uh, the, the, the Mongols far away from going uh, Castle Age. Yeah, it, it was it was a big difference. But in the south, like you said, both players, they they were in Castle Age. They, they could they push were back winning. the other. Most, yeah. most importantly, they were winning. You don't give up because one side is losing. When... Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You're winning, I mean. Oh, well, not, not much you can say about this, but... It, it, it was not the ideal game. And I, it was also, I mean, if you call GG, you know it's over. Try, man, try a little bit longer. That's that's the idea. Don't give up so fast. It's a game. Just don't take it too much to heart. Have fun. Try to win. That's the entire idea of it. I mean, yep. if you give up quickly, you could just give up in the very early minutes of the game. What's the point of that? You lose one fight, you try again. That's how you get better, right? Yep. That's how anyway, you get man, better. Anyway, man, it was it, it that that was a bit sad to watch. The, I, I feel that was very premature because they had not lost the game. They were nowhere close to losing the game. I feel they were actually winning the two versus two, which is why it's even more sad. But well, at least we had the game. I mean, it was a better game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But it is what it is, man. They decided to call uh, GG. I already changed the score, so it was pretty, you know, easy and fast games for Hong Kong A. So we were right in thinking that they are, they seem, and they were. They were stronger than UKC. So 2-0, guys. They go on. Well, good uh, good play for, for both teams, but kind of disappointing in the second game for UKC. Tomorrow, guys... Uh, more streams more matches with more streams to come at uh, 12 uh, 12 gmt 12, 12 12 gmt indeed so 12 gmt is going to be australia a versus switzerland c i will also stream here in Vubli official for whoever is interested uh, interested to see that one and also uh, tomorrow but uh, later at 5 pm gmt 17 GMT Germany A versus Canada B. So yeah, more that streams, be an more matches. Game. Indeed. Germany if, E versus Canada B. Yeah. If you will be around, just let me know, man. You know I that. probably will, man. That's the thing. I probably will be there for that game. Yeah, well, like I said, you're welcome anytime. So this is guys. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for all the support. We were hoping to see like closer games uh, and even why not all three games. Nevertheless, it, it is what it is. And in early stages, it, it happens that we will see, you know, not uh, very balanced uh, games with the difference between the teams, yeah, sometimes significant. And I think this was one of these, uh, these examples with Hong Kong A clearly uh, stronger and better than UKC. But yeah, this is how it is in uh, in the early stages of pretty much any big tournament, right? But uh, yeah, more more to come. So, Mr. Ashby, thanks for jumping in, man. Thanks for another. Thanks podcast. for having me, man. It was great, and you guys see you again. Like I said, tomorrow, 
12 uh, GMT we will start the first one followed by 5 p.m. GMT the second one so have fun whatever you do from now on have a great morning evening afternoon night wherever you are have a great weekend in case uh, yeah we won't see uh, each other again but this is a long tournament so we will see each other again more often bye bye for now thanks for all the support we love this game man mr see you, guys. see you another time man see you